All right, guys, so I'm here at Minecon. And yeah, day one here at Minecon. And here is the entrance to the main stage. Pretty cool. So right, guys, Minecon 2013 is now over. I uh, made it safely back to Illinois. And yeah, guys, it was a great, great time, let me tell you. Um, I would highly recommend anyone who loves Minecraft to go to the next Minecon. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. I was uh, I was very impressed uh, with what Mojang and their whole team put together over the course of just two days. And so yeah, we'll, we'll walk through uh, during the course of this episode and sort of take you through exactly uh, what, what went on at Minecon, what I did, and some of the panels I went to. So let's get started here. Uh, first off, this is a photo of just the main convention center. Uh, looking looking back toward that nether portal uh, entrance in the main stage I, I showed you earlier. So they got a big welcome to Minecon sign. This is actually on Friday night when I first got there. Just going to registration. Uh, and there was actually already a pretty big buzz around the area. And there was a lot of people there registering. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll show you uh, the nether portal up top in more detail here. Uh, there's no sound with this video, but... That's sort of what it looks like. Pretty cool, like, LED display of a giant life-size nether portal. It was about, I would say, 15 feet tall. So, you know, uh, pretty much pretty much life-size. The 4 meters is pretty accurate to what it was. Uh, and it goes through a whole bunch of different displays and, and things things like that. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. And now we're going to take a look. Uh, this is a picture looking down the corridor at the convention hall. Again, it was at the Orange County Convention Center, and uh, they had some pretty unique ways of displaying things. So, for instance, they showed the times of the panels on these pillars, and they had like wood pillars, brick pillars, obsidian pillars uh, from the game. So that was pretty neat to see those life-size structures like that. Um, let's see what else we got here. Ah, right. So next up, we have the Mine Mine Crack event. Uh, which was held across town. Uh, you had to catch a bus from Point Orlando to go to the Minecraft panel. And this is just a shot to show you how many people there are, really. Uh, and yeah, I actually got hit right when I was taking this photo. That's why it's a bit blurry. Uh, but yeah, a uh, lot of people there at the event. Uh, I was held at like a bowling alley type place. Um, and yeah, some of the lines were, you know, two hours long to meet some of the Minecrackers. Um, and I personally got to meet B-double-O, so here's a picture of uh, me, B-double-O, and Nebris. Uh, B-double-O is on the left, I'm in the center with a Sweden shirt, and then Nebris is on the right. Uh, Nebris, was, uh, <laughs> Nebris was a little bit intoxicated at, th at this point. Uh, this was at about 11 o'clock on Friday. Uh, but yeah, I got to talk to B-double-O for about five minutes, uh, talked a little bit with Nebris, uh, talked with JL2579, from the Zip Crowd server, uh, got to see Pyro. I think I'm in a couple of Pyro's videos, um, so you can check that out on his channel. Uh, and I'll provide a link in the description to that. Um, he did posted a lot of videos on Twitter as well, so I'll link to his Twitter too. Um, let's see. I talked to Seth Bling about some of my custom maps, and he helped me out a little bit on how to detect Ender Pearl damage automatically. So I might implement that in my Notch's Nightmare Ender Pearl Golf Course map soon. Uh, but a lot of great guys. I got to talk to Doc M77, and here's a picture of Doc M's skin here, uh, creeper skin, sort of like the uh, creeper Terminator skin. And each of the Minecrackers had their own skin, sort of like in certain positions uh, where they started off the night. Also got to meet Beige. Um, Dinnerbone was there for a while. One of the developers was there. Um, got to see Kurt J. Mack, Generic B, Gude. Uh, Zistio, Zisto, Zistio, I think that's how you say it, yeah, um, but yeah, really great time, I uh, got to meet a lot of them and interact with them a lot, uh, Kurt J. Mack was there, uh, here's a quick video of uh, Doc, there's Doc M, actually this is a picture of Doc M, and then we got him, yeah, playing basketball, I turned the audio off because it was a little bit noisy, uh, but Doc M was playing some basketball, so got to hoop it up with him for a bit, which is pretty cool because he's actually a, uh, uh, was a professional uh, basketball player. And for those of you who don't know, Doc M was on the left with the, the hat on backwards. 
Uh, and I'll link to his channel as well. He has a lot of real life uh, videos from Minecon up on his channel. So pretty cool stuff there. Great night, uh, Friday night. And then let's go to uh, the day one Minecon footage. Here we go. Uh, so this was at about this was at about nine o'clock in the morning on Saturday. And there was this huge long line in the convention center to uh, to get into the opening ceremony. Um, so yeah, this line went on for quite a way. There was cheering. Uh, people were really getting excited and hyped up for the event. Uh, so yeah, it was it was pretty incredible to see that many people there for for Minecraft. Now this is going into the actual. Uh, or actually, this is to, just to demonstrate how long the line is. <laughs> so you can see the line continues on the right. Uh, yeah, it was pretty incredible. So this is just heading into the opening ceremony. Um, and it's really cool. You get to walk through sort of the nether portal entrance. Where they had fog machines sort of billowing purple smoke down on you. Which was pretty awesome. Almost like you're entering another world or something like that. And they had some Steve stuff around there. I'll show you some more of that in a second. But we're just walking in here. And the room itself that they had the opening ceremony in is absolutely massive. Which it has to be to hold, you know, 7,500 plus people. Um, but they had some really great lighting effects. Like they had uh, some nice, nice green lighting effects uh, around the around the roof of the building um, and you can see all the people there seated uh, you know they had the big projection screens up top alright so yeah here's a better look at the stage here with C418 up there playing some music really got the crowd excited you can see the green lights on top sort of like lasers shooting shooting back toward the back of the, uh, the room uh, and the stage made out of cobblestone and uh, regular brick. Um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, and here's sort of a panoramic shot that I took that gives you sort of a sense of the scale of the room and the size of the crowd. This, uh, I was sort of in the back left-hand side of, of the room for the opening ceremonies. And I was expecting to be a little bit closer, but, I mean, people got there incredibly early. Um, the opening ceremonies itself was pretty cool. Um, I think I have a clip coming up right here. So here's a little bit of what I was talking about with C418. And he was playing some music up there. Um, they had some fun with the camera as well. You know, like the, <laughs> yeah, the chicken right there. Playing to the camera. It was pretty a pretty fun atmosphere. And people had cool stuff like those names over their heads. Like their in-game names over their heads. Great costumes. Stuff like that. Uh... So yeah, a really good time at the opening ceremony. And they were also showing some video as we waited for it to start. And you can check out the uh, opening ceremony itself. I'll put some uh, links in the description to those. And this was an interview with Jeb and Notch at the opening ceremonies. That's really awesome. Yeah, it's fun. So for both of you, how does it feel when you see how Different lives of its own. What 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 things have made you go, wow, I never intended for that? Well, I think, uh, I mean, Michael obviously is a prime example of that, uh, but I think the, the fact that there are so many people who are actually working basically full time, yes, the, taking YouTube videos and uh, doing their own conventions and all these stuff, cool stuff that people are doing. Because when I made a game, I just felt like I was just going working alone on it, but now there's a big community about it. So. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, and then Sky Does Minecraft also had a pretty good parody. A uh, live, live Minecraft parody uh, called Minecraft, and it sort of had like a mellow tone to it. It was pretty good. He did a pretty, pretty decent job here. I'll just like to listen to it a little bit. And they had a video accompanying it, so here you go.
So they also made the uh, Twitch announcement that you can live stream in game and that got people really excited and then they opened the exhibition floor. So this is the initial rush into the exhibition floor area which was probably one of the best areas they had at Minecon. Um, very cool. You can see walking in here there's the big Qcraft Jumbotron there on the left hand side. Um, and they had some really great booths, like they had some uh, stuff where you could, of course you had some stuff where you could buy um, different Minecraft me memorabilia, shirts, stuff like that. Uh, they also had this gaming area here, where you can, they had small PvP tournaments, uh, they had scrolls on some of the computers, parkour over there on the far side, um, and then they had a commentary section uh, right there where people did live commentary on the events. Um, so that was also cool. And I actually, uh, I actually won a PvP tournament there. So yeah, showing, uh, showing some domination in the PvP aspect. And I did fairly well in the parkour. I think I finished like 120th out of, uh, out of a couple thousand. Uh, this is a giant photo of, uh, of Steve. Uh, this, this is, uh, one of the things in the exhibition hall. So yeah, it's just Steve and, uh, one of his dogs. Uh, this was probably about, I would say, 30 to 40 feet tall. Um, so it was pretty impressive to see that uh, right in the center of the exhibition hall. So that was that was very cool. Uh, this is a photo of, uh, again, the exhibit hall. Um, so the main stage is behind that illuminated cube there. And the cube itself is part of the, uh, the QCraft uh, mod that was made by Google and uh, Dan, the... Dan 200, I think, is the modder who made QCraft, and it basically teaches you quantum mechanics in Minecraft. So it, how it works is that blocks change based on how they are observed. So if you view them from one side, they might be dirt, but from another side, it might be um, diamond. So that was a pretty cool mod. I went to that panel as well, which was cool. Uh, they had other stuff like this. This is the Xbox 360 uh, booth. They had like an any development game booth area as well. Um, and this is the area developed by uh, Barnyard FX and Greg Abramowitz, I want to say. Uh, but he does a lot of special effects. He's done special effects for guys like Steven Spielberg and a lot of big Hollywood people. Uh, and he basically brought Minecraft to life at uh, this exhibit. Um, so that's like a real Minecraft horse, basically. Um, yeah, I mean, life size, I mean, as, as tall as you'd expect it to be, I mean... Uh, just about two meters tall. Um, so that's the horse there. We have some other stuff. Uh, so yeah, a lot of different models. This is the, uh, the cat here. And he's on a big, big block of wheat with a, looks like a pork chop right next to him. And then of course they had the Minecraft fence around the side. Um, so very neat area. And they also had other animals such as the sheep here. So you got the black sheep and the multi-colored sheep as well as the white ones over there and finally they had uh, some other stuff like like mushrooms there was also a pig uh, off screen you can see a donkey in the background there uh, but a very cool area and a very job well well done by uh, by Greg and his whole team at Barnyard FX so that was pretty cool um, let's see what else we got here uh, this photo is oh yeah Jeb is in this photo uh, just came out of a panel uh, for this one, this is actually Saturday morning still, uh, waiting for the QCraft panel. And Jeb did a, uh, I think it was a, like a game development panel or something like that. But he had come out and he was signing autographs, so we got to got to meet him, which was, was pretty awesome. Uh, the next panel, uh, I went to a um, developing mods panel, which was great. Uh, but this is actually the Future of Minecraft panel here. And so you can see the whole Minecraft team, uh, Jeb, Grum, Dinnerbone up there. And then uh, the two other developers, they added on um, at, at Minecon, actually. They announced that they've hired two more guys to help them work on the mod API. So that, that was the big news to come out of the Future of Minecraft panel. Um, and also Dinnerbone wants seasons. Um, so that and the Twitch announcement that you can live stream in-game, which was incredibly exciting, um, are pretty much the big takeaways from Minecon, uh, Minecon for the future. Um, this was also back at the exhibit hall now. Uh, this is a big uh, sort of, I guess you want to say mural, but not really. It's basically a place where you can sign your name. 
So I signed my name on there. It was, it was pretty neat. Uh, this was Saturday night, I believe. Uh, this is just a picture of Notch. Um, I has Cupquake and Greg up there. Um, they were the judges for the, uh, the costume contest that night. Um, so the panels I went to Saturday were the Developing Mods panel, um, QCraft panel, the Future Minecraft panel, and the closing, or the, the costume contest. And I would say probably, I would say the QCraft panel was probably the best one. Um, I'll provide a link to that in the description as well, so you can watch that if you want to. I was actually in the front row for the QCraft panel, so you might see me on, on the stream, or on the, uh, on the video. Uh, this is the con costume contest winners, Saturday night. Um, so we have a, a Steve on a mushroom, which was pretty cool. Um, a red dragon with wings that worked. Uh, there was a family that sewed themselves into a four-person ender dragon costume, which I thought was pretty impressive. And then um, there was a, a mom who had a, her son on her back as a skeleton, and she was a spider, so it was like a spider jockey. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Again, I'll provide links in the description for those of you who want to watch these. Um, some of the costumes were amazing. I mean, it's just like they walked out of the game. Like, there was one Steve costume I could not believe did not win because it was just it was just that good. Um, also, Islands of Adventure was on Saturday night, which was amazing. Got to ride a lot of roller coasters. Uh, Mojang and company rented out a bunch of... Um, a bunch of... Uh, area at the Islands of Adventure just for Minecrafters, so we got right onto the rides and everything. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you to Mojang for allowing us to do that. Met a lot of cool people there, rode some of the rides, the new Harry Potter ride and stuff. Um, so that was very cool. Then this is the Redstone panel, so I'll just show you a little bit of this. Stone-related questions, and that was the number one redstone-related question. <laughs> 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 All right. Yes. 
Thanks for the question. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question. Does redstone, does redstone flow into his veins? All right. His so, skin is lost. Yeah. His hair is lava. Yeah. There's a little etho in all of us. Yeah. All right. Next question. Do you come up with an idea, then find a way to make it work? Or do you look at a redstone mechanic, then find a design to implement it? And I think this is an excellent question because this kind of it gets at uh, whenever I'm asked, how do you do it? How do you come up with stuff? Those are the two different ways that, that it happens. And I'll say they probably both happen equally when I'm trying to come up with stuff to do. It's just whatever strikes my fancy, whether it's I've just discovered a little glitch, or some quirk of redstone, or uh, or I just want to, you know, make Donkey Kong. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's just whatever uh, I feel like. But uh, they, they both they both can lead to really awesome things. Yeah, for me, actually, the only uh, time where I really wanted to base a machine uh, around a certain uh, yeah, uh, Redstone feature was when the repeater logs were introduced and I was really having a hard time to find a real good use for them and I came up with a stopwatch which was able to uh, yeah, stop time with a tenth of a second accuracy and it used the repeater logs to freeze the time pretty much and that was the only time where I really um, did use a contraption, uh, a feature and build a machine around it pretty much. Every other time it's just, okay, we are on a survival server, we want to see, can we farm this? Can we build a machine around it? So, that, uh, and then we need to figure out uh, yeah, what kind of mechanics are necessary for this and then build it up bit by bit. That's yeah. my approach. Just want to pitch in there too. Um, I work a lot with uh, my friends of the Zipcrowd server. Um, often it kind of goes like that, I have these weird dreams. And then I <laughs> come to the team speak and say, hey guys, I think about something. So this was a Saturday, a Sunday morning, um, and so yeah, uh, some of these guys I had talked to the night before, so it was kind of cool seeing them up there. Uh, Generic B, JL, Seth Bling, Doc M, I talked to all those guys at the Mineca Minecraft event, so it was pretty neat. Alright, and the next panel I went to was the uh, Growing Server Communities panel, which was fairly interesting. Um, this was just the screen beforehand before the panelists came out and so this panel mainly talked about you know how to how to grow your server community um, what to do uh, what things you can do to sort of differentiate your server from other servers and stuff like that and here's a photo of some of the guys who are on the panel I'm not sure if you guys recognize any of these guys but uh, they're pretty famous if you know uh, people who run servers so um, there's the guys from uh, Hypixel server in the middle there the bearded guy and the guy that you can barely see his face uh, is Agent K. And then there's the guys from the Showbot network who run Mind Z and the HC Factions uh, servers. So uh, they did a pretty good job of explaining, you know, what it is they do, how to differentiate your servers from others, and, um, you know, I mean, how to be successful running a server. Um, talked about plugins a little bit, uh, talked about configurations of different things. Um, and basically what you need to do to be successful running a server. So that was a pretty informative panel. Um, and then following this panel, we had the Minecraft panel. And guys, the Minecraft panel was by far the best panel on the entire uh, the entire panel list that I went to. Um, these guys have like a camaraderie between them that is just unparalleled. Um, here's just a quick quick overview of, of the guys here. Uh, if you don't know, Minecraft is a extremely popular uh, YouTuber Minecraft server. So all the guys on the Minecraft server do YouTube, and all of them are, are fairly popular and have their own big following. Um, just to give you an example, uh, B00O, the guy I showed you a photo with earlier, um, had to wait two hours to talk to B00O. Um, <laughs> That just gives you an idea of how big these guys are. I mean, Seth Pling has over a million subscribers. Um, but, I mean, in fairness, B00 at the Minecraft event was really talking to a lot of people who, um, for, for an extended period of time, like for five minutes or so. So he, he really did a great job. I have to congratulate him and thank him very much for doing that. Because I'd never seen anybody, any one person, make that many people so happy in such a short amount of time. So thank you, B00. Um... And this panel was fantastic. I'll give you a little snippet here. I will post the entire video on this channel soon, probably within the day. So here's a little snippet.
Alright, alright, alright. So I need, I need a, uh, let's see. So that was just a little preview of the Minecon, the pre-live stream uh, stuff, actually. They they came in about 20 minutes early and started doing stuff. So I'll post the entire um, pre-live stream shenanigans that went on with Minecraft um, on the channel a little bit later on. Hopefully today. If not today, then tomorrow. Um, so look forward to that and check that out on, on the channel soon. Uh, now we go back to... Um, the Minecraft experience, which was in the exhibition hall, and once again, the guys at Barnyard FX and Greg um, did a phenomenal job with this. This is sort of like a uh, a demonstration area, and here you see a picture of like a Minecraft landscape, typical landscape there. And there was also stuff like life-size statues of a creeper here, and also there was um, a life-size statue of a witch. So pretty detailed, really cool and lifelike stuff. They also had like skeletons, um, some zombies standing around different places. Really impressive stuff. And then here's some video footage of the Minecraft experience here. Uh, so here's the uh, a desert scene. Um, and, I mean the video really doesn't do it justice and how impressive this actually is. Um, I mean there's so many little details in here. It's ridiculous. Um, I mean you can see like a pig there chicken on top of the tree and that's all stuff that actually exists in game um, and there was a bunch of these different displays uh, for instance here's a jungle one um, and you can see you know like an ocelot in there um, the vines coming down stuff like that uh, there's also a I believe a mine cart yeah mine cart track there and there's Steve on the on the mine cart going across the uh, river there and then you know like a, look at that trick chicken in a tree I mean that's that's detail you have to really care about what you're doing and everything it's pretty impressive pig in a tree same thing pretty cool and then here's a night a night scene here with mobs and everything and then the final two things um, a nether this is a representation of the nether so you see the lava pool and then sort of a starry end with the ender portal, some endermen on the ground there, and the, uh, the ender crystals on top of the obsidian pillars. Uh, finally, I just want to show the, uh, the gaming area one, one last time, uh, which had some guys doing some live commentary on some of the PvP matches. They had the walls, they had um, five new custom maps, um, specifically built by uh, Friar UK um, just for Minecon um, and again I, I won one on there which was pretty cool uh, it was a good ex good experience and then of course parkour and they had some scrolls tournaments too um, so overall guys uh, Minecon was a fantastic experience um, if any of you are thinking about going either next year or any years after that go trust me it is definitely worth it I was I was not expecting much when I got there, but it definitely ex exceeded all my expectations. Um, all the big YouTubers, you know, Captain Sparkles, um, you know, I mean, Ant Venom, um, all the guys in the Minecraft server were fantastic. Uh, the developers were nice, um, willing to talk to the fans. Um, and, I mean, they had some pretty amazing stuff. 
at the uh, the closing ceremony, they had a music video um, by I think it was Caveman Films, um, and I'll provide a link to that in the description. That was really awesome um, to see a preview of that. That got people really excited, and I'm telling you guys, this convention has really gotten me excited about the future of Minecraft. Um, beforehand, I was you know I was I was kind of just going along, but now I'm I'm really wanting to play a lot more, and uh, I'm really looking forward to see what the future has for Minecraft because it's going to be awesome. And I want to say thank you guys again for all your support. I um, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, some of the other other videos that may be coming out in the next few days from me from Minecon. And uh, that's going to be all for me today, guys. So thank you all for watching. This has been Cub Fan. Goodbye.